What's going on guys? Uh, today I'm going to be talking about, and the wind's blowing. Come on wind. Stop blowing wind. Okay. Today, it may not stop blowing. We'll see. Today I'm going to talk about my, uh, my nitro bass boat. And the reason I want to talk about it today is because when I was buying it uh, about a year ago, I got on YouTube and I was trying to find some videos like I do for anything that I'm curious about. I always try to look up videos on YouTube to kind of actually see what it is, see what all it's about and you know all that good stuff uh, but I actually couldn't really find one I found one a guy had done I think it was on a 640 also uh, Nitro LX um, but I'm not 100% sure on that but I do know that it was a newer year model and I couldn't actually find one specifically for the year of this boat and uh, so I figured I would do a video um, I've had the boat about a year I'm basically just going to walk you through the boat, show you what all it offers, um, talk about what I like about the boat, and then also talk about what I don't like about the boat because there's a few things that, that I, I, I wish it had that it doesn't. But yeah, I'm sure you're uh, tired of hearing me talk already, so uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at the boat. All right, so we're on the boat. Um, I guess I'll just start uh, going through all of the, uh, you know, all the little places you can put things, like your uh, baits, your tackle, all the uh, storage compartments, basically. And uh, I'll just walk. We'll just walk through that together. And then after that, like I said, once I show you everything on the boat, I'll talk about what I like about the boat, what I don't like about the boat. Um, and yeah, that'll pretty much be it. That'll wrap up the uh, the, the video. I'm going to try to keep the video kind of short, maybe around five to ten minutes. Hopefully, I can stay somewhere in there. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. So, this boat has one, two, three, four, and then I guess five, six places you can store stuff. So the first two are on the on the uh, bow of the boat. So the first one is here. Um, that's your first little storage container. That's where I keep my life vest and stuff like that. As you can see, I got a trolling motor on here. Uh, this is, is the one that came with the boat. Um, it's a 40, 40, it's a 43 pound thrust. Um, it, 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 it does a good job. Uh, I would like to have a little bit of a uh, stronger trolling motor personally, uh, just because this boat weighs so much. Um, it's about, it's a little over a thousand pounds. Uh, whenever I looked at the specs before I bought it, that's what they, uh, that's what it said on the uh, little NADA guide or whatever. It was a little over a thousand pounds, so it is a pretty heavy boat. Which fiberglasses, you know, are always heavier. Um, but my point is, it does fine whenever I'm going, like, you know, just trying to ease along. It does good. But if I'm trying to get somewhere kind of quick, it's a little underpowered. So I wouldn't mind having something with a little more power. But it's not like I'm in any big rush to to go out and buy a hundred dollar trolling motor to put on the boat. So. I don't know, maybe one day I'll, I'll uh, you know, upgrade it. But for now, I'm just going to, uh, I'll just leave what I got on there. And the reason I brought up the trolling motor, one thing I wanted to say was, as you can see, this boat, which is an older model, it's a 2001, like I said, so it doesn't have the uh, cutout in the floor so your foot prop can sit in there, so it is exposed. It's up on the deck, you know, which I don't like. I would much rather it be cut out and sunk in like the newer boats have them, but hey, here's what it is. Moving right along, this is the second uh, storage uh spot on the boat and normally if i can get it open there we go there's nothing in there right now because this is where i like to keep my extra baits that's where i like to keep my extra baits my uh my tackle you know tackle boxes stuff like that the only thing that i will say about both of these storage containers that i don't like on the bow of the boat is how slim they are look how slim that is I mean, that's almost as, my hand, you know, as you can see, my hand is almost as long as that is wide. Now, it does get wider at the back, but not by a whole lot. So, and I guess, the, and the reason I honestly bring that up is because 
a lot of my, I do a lot of pond fishing, so a lot of my tackle stays in my tackle box. And it's got a strap I carry with me. So a lot of times when I would take the boat out, I'm just like, I just grab my tackle box and I just want to throw it in there. Well, it's so slim that my big tackle box, I can't even get in there. So I always have to take my little one. But that's just a little complaint that I have. Um, another thing about this is, and the reason, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Anyway, so now I go into the back of the boat. So here's the back, here's the stern. Uh, there's a storage container right here you can put some stuff in i got a few things in that uh this is the live well so that's one side and here's the other side of the live well and it is separated in the middle so that's a live well which is pretty good size i mean it's probably as big a live well as i'll ever need uh there's the other storage uh, compartment. It's got my girlfriend's sandals in there. It's been sitting there pretty much all year. It looks like her sunshades too. And got some other stuff, sunscreen, stuff like that in there. So that's, that very back compartment is of course where your batteries and pumps and all that good stuff. Um, some storage under the passenger seat. That's where my fire extinguisher is. And then we also have storage, of course, under the driver's seat. That's pretty much all the storage this boat has. The boat does, I'll get up here where you can kind of see, which I have another camera rolling, so I may use some film from that, but I'll get up here where you can see. The boat is cut out, so you got a little bit of walk room out there. Um, but it, normally I'll put my cooler right there in the middle, and sometimes I'll use it to stand on. As you can see, I got all the, the seat mounts out of here because I like to stand up whenever I'm bass fishing. And then I guess we will go to the controls now. Those are controls for the boat. Got the toggle switches, there's your gauges, and then you got two other ones over here. That's a temperature gauge, which actually still works. Your fuel gauge, battery volts, and uh, yeah, that's a, got, you got some decent leg room for an older boat, it's not too bad. Um, it's actually pretty comfortable to drive this boat. And then there's your, there's your uh, accelerator. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the boat for you. Um, and I, I didn't even go over the motor. The motor that came with the boat, and it's also the largest size motor they recommend for this boat, it's a uh, Tracker 90. But it's a good motor uh, for the most part. I always have to choke it a lot whenever I crank it, which is normal, I guess, for an older motor. I don't know a lot about boat motors, to be completely honest with you. This is the second boat I've ever owned. The first I only had for about a year, and it was just a little aluminum bass tracker. Um, but I need to get it serviced because I feel like I have to choke it too much. I understand on a cold start, you're probably going to have to choke it and, you know, put the accelerator up to get it to bust off. But even this boat, like whenever I do that, I'll, I'll get it running. And when it's running, it runs great. It runs fine. But if I cut it off and I let it sit for too long, I'll have to do the same thing. And I just don't feel like I should have to do that. Um, maybe I'm wrong. You can tell me in the comments your opinion on it. I could be wrong. I've yet to get it looked at. But once it's running, it's fine. It runs great. I have no issues with it. Uh, the only other thing, there's one other thing, the tilt switch has been kind of going out. It's been getting funky, so sometimes I'll go to let the tilt up, and it just won't do anything. It just doesn't do nothing. And then I am then I come back later, and it, it'll work. So uh, some things I did leave out. So you got to tilt up and tilt down right there on the bow, of course. Tilt up and tilt down on your accelerator, of course. And then, of course, you've also got a, uh, a trim tab on the uh, on the motor itself so yeah I mean that's really everything with the boat um, I'm gonna sit right here and get comfortable but yeah that's pretty much the boat uh, and I said at the beginning of this video hey the sun's finally coming look at that we got good lighting now maybe you can actually see me um, but at the beginning of the video I said that I was gonna kind of explain my you know the likes and dislikes I got for the boat and uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm happy with buying it last summer. The Okay, so the good things about it for me personally, the boat runs great, which is always, of course, good. You know, anytime you're buying a used boat, you're always scared. It's gonna, you're gonna run it twice and the motor's gonna blow up or some, something crazy is gonna happen, but it doesn't have any leaks. The bilge pumps work, all the pumps work, all the gauges work, except I think for the, the trim gauge, up and down trim gauge, which is 
to me crazy because normally these old boats you get them and usually the first thing that goes out is the uh, the uh, gauges you know the mile per hour gauges and everything so that all works so that was a big plus um, but as far as using the boat I like using the boat I like having it on the water and it's easy to maneuver it's easy to use um, it's and this next part is kind of a double-edged sword so the boat is 16 foot pretty sure it's 16 foot um, so it's, it's a shorter boat it's not super it's not a really super long boat or anything uh, but it's very stable in the water but I guess what I'm what I'm getting at is, and I say it's a double-edged sword because the fact that it's shorter and it's a little bit smaller it's easier for me to use and I'm not ex I don't like I said the second boat I've ever owned and I haven't I've only had this boat on the water maybe eight to ten times last summer so I don't have a whole lot of experience so as far as being a new you know learning the ropes of how to you know drive a boat and how to dock and how to get up on your trailer and all that good stuff having the smaller boat is nice but the downside to it is for me personally is because the bow is not as long this boat has no rod storage and at first when I was looking it up I was thinking oh look there's rod storage right there that's what that is for uh, no 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 that's that's actually not what that's for because I don't have I don't own a rod that'll fit in there all my rods they're too long is the problem so you can butt them all the way up to the front but they're gonna hang off about this far now they do have this which you can take all your rods and you can roll them up in there and you know fasten them down with your uh, straps right here but personally I really don't want to do that I just leave mine on there and I got a bungee strap right now which probably ain't good I really need to get a different kind of strap but I'll strap them down with that and I'll just leave them hanging off but as far as on the size of the boat that's really my only complaint well that and you can fish two people in this boat comfortably one on the bow one on the stern you are not going to fish three people you can do three you can fish three people but you're not going to be comfortable it's really a two-man boat and since the bow is not very this is the boat's not very long which means the bow is not super long you can't really fish too off the bow which is kind of annoying to me too so that, that's really my only complaints with the boat um other than that it's fine it's mainly just the size of it that i, I have an issue with now after i've actually used it um but it's not like it's a deal breaker i'll keep this boat for a while and if i ever decide to get another one the next one i get i'll know you know and i'll feel more comfortable using it because I'll have some actual experience with this boat um, but for like a starter boat it's great honestly if you can find you like a 2000 model or up you know nitro 640 LX and you can get it for the right price I mean I, I would recommend the boat I, I like I said you heard my my complaints on the boat and there and none of it's it's just more quality of life complaints you know what I'm saying it's more you know how how many people can I get on the boat how you know uh, me complaining about you know not having a rod storage stuff like that it's not like you have to have those things to fish you know but it just makes things easier it helps keep things neat in your boat and things like that um so yeah i guess that's all i'm going to do on this video i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and i hope that this helps somebody that's the reason i did it when i was looking up uh for this boat on youtube i really couldn't find a lot so hopefully this might help somebody all right, guys, that's going to be it for me. Thank you for watching this video all the way through. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoy this content. Um, also, feel free to leave comments below. If you have any questions about this boat, uh, feel free to ask, and I'll answer them as best as I can. But, yeah, guys, that's going to be it, be it for me. i got to get out of here. i got to put this boat up and put the cover tarp, uh, boat cover, back over it. So i got to get out of here. Peace out, guys. See you next time.